I would suggest that we would uh, would jump into the um, the presentation of of the of the book and the uh, and the remote links uh, uh, series that will be uh, produced within the, during the next weeks uh, in several episodes. Um, maybe you could introduce us to to the idea of the book and uh, well, the book is here. I, I have a copy with me, so <laughs> that you are aware of and. Um, so it came out in December and uh, uh, is now being launched uh, with this, uh, this event that will be uh, ongoing with, uh, with uh, video um, episodes that will be uh, screen, screened on online. It will be an online event. And it's also in our bookshop, in case you're interested, you, it's also there to be, to be bought. Yeah, I mean, so much of what we are going to, uh, so much about the series is in the video that we're about to show. And I have to say, you, you've all been very gracious in putting up with us for so long, and now we're going to give you another 20 minutes of us talking. <laughs> um, um, so I don't want to repeat anything from that too much. Um, as, as Pedro, and we, we talk about the book in there as well. Um, I don't want to repeat so much that's in the video. I would just say, as he said, um, this is the introduction to a series that will be produced in the next few weeks. So the next episodes will probably be coming out. I don't, we don't actually know, maybe towards the end of January, but we can't actually 100% say. But then once they start coming out, there should be eight episodes that will come out once a week for a little while. And what we can say, however, I'm actually just trying to pull this up in my phone, or maybe, I mean, you can find it too. But what we can say, which is not in the video, is that we do uh, now have um, a confirmed participant list. So we can tell you all who all will be participating in this series. And um, Yes, I'm just trying to pull this up. Um, we will have um, the, the wonderful um, um, musicologist, sociologist, Regina Bourne. We will have the incredible um, um, sound people, Martina Roberts and uh, Marina Rosenfeld, um, the incredible sort of spatial architectural theorist, Shannon Matern. We'll have, um, um, who am I forgetting, Amy? Um, we'll have, um, uh, I'm opening Kynes. it on my phone. <laughs> um, it, it's a, it's just a, a sort of spectacular lineup of people that we've put together who um, we imagine as exciting readers of the book. They're not necessarily people who knew Marianne, although some of them did, but they're people who we imagine um, will be um, responding to these documents for the first time and will respond in an exciting and new kind of way. Awesome. Bill, I'll just go ahead and round out the list if that's okay with you. Um, we'll Please. have, um, we'll have um, a wonderful music, uh, music theorist and critical theorist, Dumont Gopinath, um, sound studies scholar and uh, critical theorist, Roshanik Keshti, um, art historian, Darla Migan, and the amazing composer and performer, uh, Matna Roberts. To awesome. fill in the rest of our participants. Um, um, yeah, thank you. No, thank I you. am I personally am. very excited to hear what they'll, uh, how they'll engage the book, and I hope that uh, you are too. Thank you so much. And hopefully, watching this last little bit of us will be engaging too. Okay. Thank you for sharing that, and um, and uh, we'll be looking forward to see the the episodes uh, of this series. And uh, well, um, I'd like to thank everybody for staying here. And uh, we'll now uh, screen the, this first introduction to this series. You're welcome to stay here to see, and, but it, it will also be uh, uh, screened online uh, in case you prefer to, to do it uh, home or when, whenever you want. So again, uh, Bill and Amy, Thank you so much for your precious uh, collaboration and uh, for your deep knowledge of uh, Marian's life and work. Uh, it is it was a, it's a pleasure to 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 get closer to to, to your research, and um, we'll certainly uh, uh, 
be in touch. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, you Pedro, and, and thank and thanks everyone. Much much joy in the coming presentations in the next few days. Yes, um, thank you so much for having us, and um, very excited for the next events in this um, project. Yes, additional tones will continue in the next two days. Uh, we'll have the screening of uh, Sisters with Transistors, a film by Lisa Rovner about uh, the history of women composers that, uh, that were pioneers in the electronic music, but not, but not only. And, uh, and on Sunday, there will be two concerts. We'll present Petra, uh, uh, a piece for two pianos by Marian Amasher that will be played by uh, Marin Schroeder and Joanna Gamma. And we'll have also uh, a concert by Thomas Ankersmith based on uh, Marian Amasher's uh, research on autoacoustics uh, called uh, Perceptual Geography. Thank you all. <laughs>
as someone educated as a composer and artist, which I was, um, and someone profoundly dissatisfied with the political position and potential of art worlds, this remark from Amache gestures toward a kind of work that eludes the elitist specialist niches of high art by touching us in ways we didn't even know we could be touched, by addressing what Amache calls elsewhere our quote unquote unnamed sensibilities. Um, I met Amache in 2003. Uh, I was very much a sort of young, frustrated composer living in Berlin. And I met her in that moment as a kind of fan. And I had then the great luck just a few years later around 2005 to start working with her and to be in dialogue with her until for the rest of her life through uh, 2009. Um, basically, anytime she would be in Europe, we would, we would meet up and I would you know, assist her. We would just meet and talk and do whatever. Um, anyway, since her passing, I've just done basically all I can to just support her work and legacy. Um, in the long interim period leading up to the placement of the Amishay collection at the New York Public Library, I made a preliminary inventory of the more than 100 boxes of materials that were uh, uh, collected. Um, this, which includes tapes or, you know, really all manner of audio, uh, recording media, um, tapes, videos, writing, photos, sound equipment, all kinds of personal effects, uh, almost all of which has yet to be shared with the public in any form whatsoever. Amazing. Thank you so much, Bill. I absolutely love that quotation as well, and I'm so glad that you shared it in this context. Um, I'm also going to read um, a couple of passages that maybe, like Bill, I may also have overused in my own writing, but that's um, mostly because I just, I find them so rich and so suggestive. Um, these, uh, I'm going to share three texts and they're, um, they're all written in the uh, early 1970s. Um, one comes, will be an excerpt from a kind of uh, manifesto-like um, essay titled Long Distance Music. And then I'll read two other sort of shorter text pieces that sort of begin to sort of put some of the ideas that come together in long distance music into practice. So my excerpt will be slightly, um, slightly longer than uh, what Bill read, but I do um, hope it sort of brings this, some of this moment in Amish's work and thought uh, to life. She writes, the music we make is confining us to boundaries of one place situations all the time. Receptive to our own structures only as we are making them. Long distance music is developing occasions for boundaries of one place situations can begin to vanish. Some involve electronic links, some do not. All involve the interaction between men and sound at distant locations focused together in the same instance of time, making music together, listening and transmitting out of the place we are in, communicating outside our own structures. New awareness is developed for the places we are in with links and because of actual acoustic change affecting us and with occasions like green weather requiring a completely new attitude of mind. Having to extend our listening in this manner extends our receptivity to each other, to the music we are making in the very room we are in. Becoming more alive to each other, open to receiving and sharing outside our immediate structure, we no longer sit down to play with the same listening habits. We must stop. Extend our listening out of customary circumstances outside our own structures, producing change in us and in the music we are making. We all begin to hear each other much better in the place we are in. And so I'll now turn um, to the text piece titled Green Weather, which in this excerpt she associates with, quote, a completely new attitude of mind. 
so green weather here. There are no electronic links. We make a special occasion to listen for each other, even though we are at distant points in the world. Playing music in our own places, New York, Los Angeles, Rome, Tokyo. The score is based on exchange of energy, using sun and moon as guides. Orienting to distant sun and moon, sending and receiving. Playing in early morning East Coast, we are receiving the full sun of Rome. Our music will reflect this. Sending to Rome the stillness of early morning. We stop at 8.30 a.m. while West Coast gives the grace before sunrise energy in their music making to Europe now in midday. Europe stops in mid energy and the next cycle would receive a night to reabsorb. We set aside a period of eight days to perform green weather in the beginning. So I would really like to spend the next days, eight days actually doing that. Um, so there's, yeah, there's so much and so much going on in, in these texts. Um, when Amishay uh, wrote them in the early 1970s, um, she started at, at a sort of interesting moment after having completed the 28-hour uh, radio broadcast in Buffalo, New York, um, which was at that time titled City Links WBFO Buffalo. Um, and then prior to also starting the, um, the telematic series City Links in 1973. So these long distance music pieces are sort of imagining how to do long distance listening together without high tech needs or without um, relying necessarily on institutional support. Um, these are sort of long distance connections created via text and through um, practices of heightened sensitivity as a kind of transport to another time and place, which will become so important in some of the later pieces um, related to the excerpt that Bill had, that Bill just read. Um, also, it's not so much in this essay that, that it's, it's that music is sort of done always in one place. It's that the, the idea of one location has become constitutive of what music is in the very first place. And so part of what I hear in these essays um, is a kind of a call for a full and total rework of what music can be um, when listening is deferred or referred across multiple sites and attached not only um, to the ear, but to other embodiments, activities, and um, sensitivities across distantiated environments. So um, unlike Bill and probably many readers and viewers, um, I did not meet Marianne Amishé during her lifetime. And I instead initially came to know her music through the music of, of, of her students. Um, this came through a, a collaboration with um, composer and artist Woody Solander in, I think, 2003 as well, when I was not a frustrated composer, as Bill put it, but a frustrated violist. Um, and I played a piece of Woody's that um, involved, um, I'm acting it out right now, um, involved ensemble playing, but with a, it had a long interlude of his, his sort of experiment with um, Amache's techniques of composing for um, ear tones or sounds that are generated inside the inner ear. And the experience stopped me in my tracks and raised so many questions for me about what listening and music could even be in the first place. And that generated intense curiosity about Amache, um, the person who made it, and about this kind of imagination about what the life of the body and ear could be, as well as the stories, histories, and sort of even worlds that could cohere um, in their imagination. And I've been um, grateful and lucky to um, work with Bill and many of Amache's uh, friends and colleagues since um, beginning research in earnest in summer 2012.
So I think as Bill and myself expressed in both in different ways, um, we've both had the experience of doing research on Amish while the ground is still very much shifting um, under the vast material traces that make up the archive. And we've also been kind of doing the work of imagining her public memory in a way that has to be very provisional and very open-ended. Um, in 2016, we began to develop a program of seminars and listening sessions at first under the auspices of curatorial platform um, blank forms that kind of staged our own relationships and engagements with the archive um, as public facing at a very, very early stage. And this has informed the way in which we edited the selected writings and interviews and specifically framing it as a selected rather than a collected volume as a way to emphasize the rigorous but also fragmentary character of the project. Um, but we've also been able to sort of move that ethics um, to see it at the very center of Amache's work and working method so that grasping the unrealized and speculative dimensions um, at play here has really become the center of, of research. And I guess one way I would summarize that question is sort of how do we learn from Amache how to speculate in the ways that she seems to have done at a very early stage and then throughout her work um, in a comprehensive way. So the, the care we've taken in putting together these seminars and listening sessions that Amy was just referring to, as well as the way we've organized the Selected Writings book, also has very much to do with also being very honest about not just how much unprocessed materials there are, but how little we really understand those. And that seems really crucial to remember insofar as Amshi herself was so incredibly careful about questions of presentation, format, um, institutional framing, etc. cetera. Um, and we have hoped then in, in imagining a celebration of the arrival of these materials at the library and uh, the publication of the book to to create this series remote links um, in a format that also respects the ununderstood complexity of her work. Uh, remote links itself, the series that this video inaugurates, is a series of online episodes that culminate in an online group discussion. The serial format of the whole thing gestures toward Amache's MIDI sound series, a large work series that she started in the mid 80s and the remote online aspect of remote links, uh, just which toward her city links, um, the kind of works that followed the you know, long distance music text that Amy was reading from before. Like uh, Amishri's grand unrealized media opera, Intelligent Life, remote links centers the process of reading and experimenting as themselves forms of narrative intensity and shared listening. Each episode of the series to come will feature a guest uh, reading from and then responding to a passage from the Selected Writings volume, something that's caught their attention personally. And after all of these episodes have aired, guests from the series will come together for a talk hosted online by the Serapis Museum of Contemporary Art. If in reading the Selected Writings or in watching any of these remote leaks videos, you have any questions or thoughts that you'd like to share, we plan on talking through viewer and reader responses during this concluding group discussion. So please send us your responses to an email that will be shown in a moment. Um, and to conclude this, this uh, little starting salvo broadcast thing, um, I also just wanted to sort of reiterate and read a little bit of something that Amy already read, um, slightly expanded, uh, something as well from the long distance music uh, text, which just really is a sort of sort of uh, banner uh, for this for this series. Amishay writes, "Quote: Becoming more alive to each other, 
open to receiving and sharing outside our immediate structure. We no longer sit down to play with the same listening habits. We must stop, extend our listening out of customary circumstances, outside our own structures, producing change in us and in the music we are making. The experience of being in more than one place at one time. Ear is the channel. It activates. Muito obrigado pela vossa presença e pronto, tá, o primeiro o primeiro momento inaugural desta desta série termina aqui. Espero poder ver-vos no, no resto da, da do programa Disney Tones, que irá continuar então com a projeção do filme amanhã de manhã e os dois concertos uh, no domingo de manhã. Obrigado a todos.